welcome back to my channel thanks for joining me today I'm going to show you how I paint a yoni and a rose in watercolor I um, appreciate you being here and checking out my work and for your support um, to my patreon subscribers you make this possible so thank you so much I love you uh, if you're checking this out on YouTube or anywhere else please like and subscribe so I have started this drawing by putting pencil on, um, it's a rough watercolor paper, it's ba Banyo, it's a new brand I was trying out, so I can put a link to that in the description box below. In fact, I'll put all the materials that I'm using uh, and my whole setup a description um, in, in what I'm doing. So here I had the pencil light sketch mapped out of where I was going to go with the yoni itself but the rose as you can see here that I'm actually doing freehand I have wet this whole piece of watercolor paper and I'm using a wet in wet technique where I drop in or just another that's another way of saying place different pigments onto the watercolor paper and let them blend together to make color combinations that might be a little bit unexpected as to or different to what that I would actually be able to make myself pre-mixing on a palette. So it's a really lovely way to work, especially to begin um, a painting. I, I do like to work wet in wet. So I have a couple of pigments I've been using already. I use Daniel Smith watercolors for the most part. I do have a couple of other uh, brands, but most of what you'll be seeing here is Daniel Smith. The yellow is New Gamboge. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. I never quite know. There's also Quinacridone Rose, which is a lovely color uh, on its own and for mixing. And here I'm putting in some greenery. It's uh, Hooker Green and uh, maybe I think I bring in a couple of other colors here as well as I go through I just dropped before I just dropped some of the quinacridone rose into the green and letting that kind of work in together it's a bit of sap green as well hookers green and sap green and they're blending together on the paper um, to make their own little color there uh, this red that I've brought in here, I actually think it could be um, Pearl Red. It's not a color that I have been using a lot of, but it's, I've added it to my palette and I'm really enjoying it as a warm red tone to bring into my artworks. And it also mixes beautifully with the new Gamboge yellow that I've got there as well. So just keeping on working in here, um, of course, this artwork has been sped up. Well, the, the painting itself is in real time. That's, this has not been sped up, but I have cut out all the areas where I'm mixing or observing um, just to be able to reduce it down for the length of this YouTube video. So this artwork I worked on over a couple of days. I do like to let them dry properly in between going in with extra layers of pigment. And that gives me time to really reflect on what's going on in the artwork and get some separation between the artwork and myself to be able to come in a little more objectively and be able to judge what I'm going to do next. So the vulva here has got a light wash of watercolour already. I'm bringing in a little bit of the warm, it's a very pale wash of the warm red bit of a skin tone color along the hood and uh, just working on building up the um, the colors that I've got here so coming in with something a little deeper now this is a blend I, I believe I I um, pre-mix this one on my palette and it would be the Pyrrhal or the quinacridone rose I'm not quite sure um, with the yellow that I've used I've used the one yellow the new you game um, Daniel Smith New Gamboge all the way through here and I love the yellow I find it just makes beautiful washes and it's a lovely warm yellow color so it works very well 
for mixing with the reds and pinks to create lovely uh, warm hues. So I have a whole lot of these pigments on my palette and I'm mixing in the palette and just really quite freely coming up with new tones as I'm coming in here to put more layers of paint down. Uh, here I'm putting a slightly cooler colour than the yellow along the hood to have a, a different effect. I, I wanted the hood to stand out um, as as if it was coming off the paper and with the cool pigments on the side of that it allows it to come forward. So here on my rose I'm just building up petals. Quinacridone rose is being used here. Uh, I previously had dropped in my yellow but just freeform thinking about the shapes of petals, um, how a rose actually uh, is formed. I have a reference photo that I was looking at also but just letting it happen quite naturally, just letting it be a bit free in that process is a really fun thing to do. So uh, again, on to the vulva, and each side here is being built up with the watercolor, just allowing that to um, bring some depth with uh, the quidacridone rose, and I think also quidacridone rose mixed with some imperial purple to have a, um, a cooler skin tone, um, what colour that could work for the cools in a skin tone. So this purple that I've mixed here and blending it in as I work further up. At the top here, this is actually cobalt violet. It's a beautiful granulating pigment that I uh, use sparingly. But in this situation, I felt with the colours that I'd been working with, it was working quite well. Just making some layers here and allowing the colours to uh, wash out with the, a watery wash. So it is um, ends up being a finer wash, building up those layers. So the shape is coming together. It's a bit of an effect of push and pull. I actually am teaching watercolour now and um, I've been working with concepts of like this in my class. I'm working one-on-one -on -one with a student on a, in a tutoring capacity but I'm also working in a, in a very small group environment. Um, and if there's enough interest, I would actually be considering doing an online workshop. So if you would be interested in learning in a lot more detail about what I'm doing when I'm painting and the thoughts behind that, please go ahead and leave a comment for me. Uh, also join my mailing list on um, my website, which is katieloyd.com.au. I have a link for that in the um, description below. And there you can um, get on the list and I can let you know when I have things like art classes coming up. And I'm always really happy to share information with people looking to learn about watercolour. Uh, it would, might not necessarily be Yoni or vulva painting, but actually just watercolour foundations. Really important so you can actually learn to paint anything at all. So here I am uh, working on dry areas of the painting, loosely suggesting more petals and leaves. Uh, just a very light treatment of the paper. You might have noticed actually that this paper hadn't been taped down. Normally I would tape down the paper onto a board. However, this time I uh, did and I was testing out this watercolour paper and wanted to show or see what it would be like in um, the way of buckling with a lot of pigment on the paper. So this is Appetite. It's a Daniel Smith colour. It's a lovely uh, thick pigment which granulates. I also have some, um, I think it's Perylene Green that I'm dropping in on top of that, on that mix. And this is adding some depth, allowing for the Yoni and the rose to come forward and the greenery to um, recede back into the painting. I just dropped in some pigment there and picked up, physically picked up the paper to allow 
the pigment to run and flow where I wanted it to go. So in the areas of the rose that are still wet, I'm dropping in some yellow. And a lot of this is just happening really intuitively. I'm having fun while I'm doing this painting and really wanting to be able to explore what these pigments are going to do on this very heavily textured paper. I often use a, a very smooth paper and it was really nice to play with this one. This artwork actually is uh, a download for my Patreon subscribers. On my Patreon I have a few different levels and uh, of course this video is available for my Patreon uh, subscribers and supporters but they also get to be able to download a, um, a digital file of this artwork and they can see closer how it's actually been painted and print it out and frame it for themselves if that's something that they want to do. Um, it also could be used as a screensaver or however else you want to uh, use it except of course it cannot be reproduced for anything but personal use. When I have my um, downloads they are just a personal use not for sale and I remain uh, the copyright owner. Pretty important information there. So this part of the video has been sped up. I was drawing and putting some white into this artwork and I use a Uniball Signo um, broad nib white, it's angelic white I believe, pigment ink. These are just found locally from a stationery supply shop. I get mine from a place in Australia called Officeworks. I'm sure they'd be available uh, around the world, I believe they are. And they are an archival ink, which means that they're not going to fade in time. A lot of different pens, the inks will fade. And I want this one to be able to stay strong. But what I'm doing is adding highlights. So to add a bit of definition of where petals start and finish. And then I'm also shortly going to work on bringing these highlights in on the vulva as well. And it's just showing where light is catching or I use it as a highlight to add some interest and break up the different areas of the painting. 